Now we need to add checkpoints to the level so we can keep track of the player's time. Okay? So in the game scene controller, let's add a new empty game object. So click create empty. Let's name it checkpoints like this. Okay, the position is already on zero zero zero. Okay, so the checkpoints are going to be an abstract object. So let's create empty again. Let's name it checkpoint. Okay, in the singular right now. And what a checkpoint is going to have is a script, okay, for the for the, the checkpoint logic, and a collider. Okay. So when we have the checkpoint marked, click add component and name in here box collider. Okay, like this. So you might not be able to see it, but there is a little box, a little green box in here, which shows where the checkpoint is. Okay, let's drag it here. All right, it is much better to see now. Let's bring it a little bit up. All right, perfect. And now you won't be able to see checkpoints, okay? It is something abstract. There is no visual for it, at least in this game. And what we want to do is we need to verify whenever the card enters the checkpoint so it kind, kind of validates that the player reached the checkpoint. And now, since we want to make sure the player collides with the checkpoint, we need to make sure that this checkpoint is wide enough to occupy the whole width of the track. Okay, so we're going to the box collider and then we're going to change the size component in the x axis, okay, like this. All right, let's bring it a little bit down. All right. See, the player cannot avoid this checkpoint. So they're going to walk in through and then we can add another checkpoint in here and another in here. Okay, we're going to fill the level with a few checkpoints to validate that the player is running in the correct direction. All right, we also need to add a script to this checkpoint. So let's go to the project window. We're going to right click anywhere, select create, C sharp script and name it checkpoint controller, right? Let's go to checkpoint we just created. Let's drag this script to the checkpoint, all right? And there we go, we have a, a very simple checkpoint in here. And double click the checkpoint script so it opens in Unity. And let's define a few things. First of all, let's import the system namespace, okay? So using system. And we need this because we want to, to create a callback for whenever the player hits the checkpoint. So we're going to define in here public action on hit by player like this. An action is like a, a simple way to use methods, okay, to, to write in routines to be called when something happens. And okay, now that the checkpoint controller has a collider and also you need to, to go to the checkpoint, okay, select the box collider here and click is trigger. And we do this because we're going to use a trigger collision, okay, it is a very simple collision. And it happens whenever an object which contains a rigid body, which our card do, okay, our card does, like here, then something, a, a method, a collision method is going to be called. All right, so in here in the checkpoint controller, you're gonna write in void on trigger enter, and as a parameter, you receive a collider C. Okay, and now we need to verify if we collide collided with the card, and to do this, we're going to use if C dot get component card controller like this. Okay, card controller is the type. There's no parameter for this. And if c.getComponent card controller is different than null, okay, let me just check something. All right, this nice. If card is different than null, then the collision actually happens. So we're going, we're going to call on hit by player, like this. Okay, and there is another thing that is important in here. We need to define a public int checkpoint ID. Okay, and why is this? Because we want the player to hit the checkpoints in order. All right. So imagine the track is just this line. And then you start it, you need to hit checkpoint zero, you need to hit checkpoint one, you need to hit checkpoint two. 
and so on until you hit the final checkpoint. Let's say it's nine, for example. And we want to be in order because we don't want the player to be cheating, okay? If there is no logic for order, then the player could just come in here and hit checkpoint zero and then just move back around and then continue in this endless cycle and finish the level, okay? So we want a checkpoint ID. Okay, and since we are defining a checkpoint ID here, then our action needs to be different. Okay, we need our action to work like this. What did we do here? We are, def we are saying that our action object or our action variable is going to receive a parameter which is going to be an int. Okay, so this method now, instead of being a void method, now Actually, it is a void method, but you also need to pass a integer parameter to it. Okay, so we define a checkpoint ID here, and in the on hit by player, we're going to pass in the checkpoint ID like this. Okay, so if the the checkpoint is collide collides with the player, then you're going to call the on hit by player method and pass in the checkpoint ID. Okay, let's go to Unity. Let's wait for the code to compile, and you see that now there's a checkpoint ID in here. Let's leave it at zero, okay? And now let's make the other checkpoints in the level. Let's not make too much of them. So we can simply duplicate the checkpoint and then move it, say, here. You can rotate it by 90 degrees, so it fills the level, okay, like this. All right, let's, let's set the checkpoint ID to be one. Okay, so if you click on checkpoints, you can see all of them at once. Let's add a new one in here, okay, in this position. Let's rotate it back to zero and the checkpoint ID will be two, like this. Then let's add a third checkpoint in here. Oops, I used the wrong, okay, let's add it here. Checkpoint ID three, okay. And if you click on the checkpoints game object, you might be you are going to see all the three checkpoints of the level. So you have zero, one, two, and three, okay. And when you hit the checkpoint zero again, then a lap is going to be uh, is going to be completed, okay. So if we run the game right now, nothing happens when we hit the checkpoint. You see an error arised in here because we didn't define uh, we, we didn't assign anything to our on hit by player method, okay? So the game is not going to work properly. Only errors will arise, okay? So in the next video, we're going to learn how to assign these variables and make the labs effectively work, all right? I see you in the next video. So the way we have the game right now, we don't do any logic for when the card reaches the checkpoint. So let's work on this. First of all, go to the game scene controller and we're going to declare in here public game object checkpoint container. Okay, we do this to keep a reference to the game object that contains the checkpoints. So let's save, go to Unity. Let's clear the console in here. All right, now a new field has been added, which is checkpoint container. So let's put the checkpoints game object in here. Okay, so everything is assigned properly. And in the start method of the game scene controller, we're going to type in for each checkpoint controller checkpoint in, and in here, we're going to pass the, the thing we want to iterate over. So we're going to type in, checkpoint container dot get components in children and the type of these components need to be a checkpoint controller okay so this looks a little bit large but what we're doing is we're going to check for all the checkpoints okay inside an array that contains all the checkpoints that are children of the checkpoint container okay so we open and close our scope in here and now we are going to assign the checkpoints action. So, uh, and actually before we do this, let's create a method of our own. So void on say reach checkpoint, and then int 
checkpoint ID and we're going to do something in here and not now okay all right so what we're going to do in the for each loop is we're going to use checkpoint dot on hit by player is going to be and then we're going to define the action okay and actions are defined like this okay the first part of the action is the the name of the parameter okay and in this specific game we need to define a parameter in here and since in the checkpoint controller we pass a checkpoint ID let's give the same name here so int checkpoint ID all right it is just like a method declaration and then what is going to happen is we're going to call on reach checkpoint passing checkpoint and checkpoint ID as a parameter okay so we are looking at all checkpoints inside checkpoint container we're going in one by one and we are assigning the on hit by player action to be this action okay this action receives one parameter and what we do is we call the method we defined in here and to make sure this is working properly let's print the checkpoint ID we are currently at so debug.log checkpoint ID let's see if all the connections we are making reaches this correctly which is what we want okay let's go to unity wait for it to compile and hit play and now pay attention to the console window in here so you see a zero was printed which is the console which is the checkpoint ID you have one then you're going to have two once we do this little turn in here two and, oops I hit the wall let's take a turn here three and when I reach zero then this should be enough for the lab to be finished and the time to be saved okay so this is looking good we now made all the communication we needed and we reduce our problem of going into checkpoints to simple numbers okay so in the next video we're going to make this the the lab logic to work okay we're getting very close see you there Now, in order to, to keep track of the checkpoint the player is and make all the logic to process the, the labs, we're going to do this. Let's define a, a variable in here, which is private int current checkpoint. And let's start it assigned as minus one. Okay, let's do it like this. Now, on the on reach checkpoint, we need to do this verification. If checkpoint ID, which means if the checkpoint we currently reached we currently hit equals to current checkpoint okay I name it checkpoint okay checkpoint if checkpoint ID is current checkpoint plus one then it means we reached the the correct checkpoint because we don't want the player to be cheating okay you want them to visit the checkpoints one by one okay so when you are in zero you want to go to one and then to two and three and until you reach the final checkpoint okay like this so if you reach the checkpoint that you had to be then you're going to increase the current checkpoint by one okay it means you reach the correct checkpoint all right and now how do we verify if uh, we finish the lap we're going to do this if checkpoint ID is zero which means we reach the the first checkpoint of all and the current checkpoint equals to three okay which in this game is our last checkpoint then it means and let's print it here to test okay it means we finished a lap okay like that and we reset the current checkpoint to zero okay so we check if we reach the correct checkpoint and we check if we finish the lap okay so let's go to unity wait for the code to compile and when we hit play we can move around okay let's go through each of the checkpoints like this okay and if this is working properly then we are ready to keep track of how much time we took to finish this lap and give this information for the player okay so we're moving around and there we go we have a finished lap message in here so when this happens we want to keep track of the value game timer was before so let's type in here 
private float and let's use best time okay and let's assign this best time value to be something big okay let's keep it simple let's define it as 999 okay so and let's type in here something as well let's use a private bool let's type in a finished lap okay let's type it like this it starts as false so when you reach the final checkpoint then we're going to define finished lap as true okay so the game knows that we already finished a lap and then we're going to do this best time is going to be the following we're going to use a ternary ternary operator in here we're going to get game timer let's check if game timer is lesser than best time okay we are making a question here so is the game timer lesser than the best time so you put a question mark in here so if it is then best time is going to be game timer if not it would stay as it is right now okay let's take a, a, a more care look in here so first we make a verification here we want to see if we beat our record so game is game timer lesser than best time okay then we make a question here then if it is we're going to assign this game timer to best time okay so best time contains actually the best time and if it doesn't then we're going to say best time equals to best time okay so essentially this portion does nothing okay all right now we have track of the best time in here now that we finished a lap we want to set game timer back to zero okay because we are starting a new lap okay and finally we need to show this in the text so what we want to do here is I'm gonna add a verification in the game text portion so if finished lap then game text dot text we're going to add a new text in here so we add a backslash n to add a new line then we're going to type in best time okay and then we're going to call the floor method and apply in here the best time float number okay let's review again we define it a value for best time we define it a boolean value to say if we finish the lap okay and when we reach the final checkpoint we set the current checkpoint back to zero we say the the game uh, the player finish at least one lap we set the best time to the proper value and we reset the game timer back to zero and in here if the player finishes a lap then we put the best time text in the game okay so let's wrap it up and see how it behaves on unity okay we play the scene let's try to do our best time in here let's try to cut some corners and avoid getting stuck on them okay like this we are on the final curves now and when we reach the checkpoint there we go time goes back to zero and best time is now 16 okay all right this should be it for this game okay we learned some very simple things we, we use the lots of tools that already come in with unity so we can get the the best results as quick as possible okay and as a challenge you can try to make a new level of uh, of your own and maybe you can change how the rotation works so the cart drifts in the level okay so this adds a new level of challenge and maybe you can have a logic as well that if you hit the walls then you lose more time Okay, so there's a lot of things to do here to make the game even funnier, okay? And you can challenge your friends, right? I hope you love this lesson, okay? If you want to see more game lessons and uh, programming lessons, just head over to mammothinteractive.com. There are tons of great courses in there, okay? And my name is Glaucopides, and I hope you enjoy this. I see you in the next video tutorial. Bye-bye.